Welcome to the Pilates Show, where we explore Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. Hi, I'm Jennifer Gianni. Cass is helping me. And this is part three of our leg float diagnostic, um, looking at the stability in the pelvis and the spine. So in our second part, we looked at bringing more, uh, highlighting more volume to that rock star piece of tissue, the transverse abdominis. Um, I'm gonna show you another technique on how to do that, right? And then we're gonna actually try to go into a leg float so we can kind of see the, the difference of what Cass did in the first video. Um, now, when you uh, are taking a course with us, when you take the pre and postnatal course with us, or you take the transverse um, rectus abdominis course with us, I don't, I can't do everything while someone's in supine, right? In these short videos, I have to. But in real time, in a live course, I would get cast up, we would look at her rib cage, we would look at her gait, her breathing, give her some skills in, in seated and upright. Um, so she learns a lot more about her deep, deep system functionally and how to counter gravity and then taking those skills back onto her back and doing that diagnostic exercise again when she's learned all those skills. But when we're supine, I wanna show you another one that you can use. And, and sometimes your clients, depending on what's going on, you have to keep them supine for a while. But as soon as you can, you do wanna get them upright and, and functional. So we're gonna to go to the ASISs again. So this is another way that I can start to turn up the volume, to get her to know more about the feeling, the sense of that deep system, her transverse abdominis and her pelvic floor um, specifically. So I'm bringing the heels of my hands to the outside of her ASIS bones. Now, when I squeeze in, there's gonna be a tendency for the client to roll back in their pelvis. We've taken care of that to a certain extent because we have the little burrito under her lower back. So it gives her a little bit of support for her lumbar spine and it gives her, the pel it gives her pelvis the message of kind of to fall off the cliff a little bit so she stays more neutral in her pelvis. So I'm gonna press into those ASIS bones. It's like I'm closing the book here. I wanna bring the ASIS bones towards the center. She keeps the pelvis in place. She takes a deep inhale. And then on her exhale, I want her to imagine that she's trying to bring the ASISs towards the center line. She's trying to close the book. Good. And then what does that do for the client? Well, in our neutral pelvis, we have a narrowed top of the pelvis and a wide bottom of the pelvis. And a lot of our clients tend to be more posterior. They tend to want to cinch the sitting bones or squeeze around the sitting bones. So the idea of bringing the ASISs closer together, narrowing the top of the pelvis, automatically gives her a broadness in the bottom of her pelvis. Right? So we get sitting bones wide, we get an unleashing of the tail as we narrow the top of the pelvis. Now remember, we talked about in a couple of videos ago, when we looked at the three parts of the transverse abdominis, we talked about cueing the client to imagine that the thumbs were coming towards the midline. So this is another layering in that whole cue. Because when the transverse abdominis, biomechanically, when we contract or engage the transverse abdominis, it's pulling laterally. So the muscle tissue, fascial tissue, all the tissue, is pulling laterally. But what happens is that the bones at the top of the pelvis come closer together. So the muscle wraps in one direction, and the bones of the pelvis in the front come closer together, 
because of that engagement of the transverse. So I promised we would do another little leg float here. So we're gonna do that. And so with all the knowledge that we've done in these past three videos, right? Pretending that Cass is a beginning client, she's gonna try to keep her spine and pelvis as neutral as possible. And she's gonna float the leg up and down with control using her breath, think, really thinking about that deep, belly connection as the leg goes down. Very good, and rest. That's it for today. If you have a different take on today's subject or if there's anything you'd like to see covered in an upcoming episode, we'd love to hear from you. Comment below, on Facebook, Twitter, or in the forum at fusionpilatesedu.com. See you next time and never stop learning.